Some controversial issues are discussed today in relation to the application of human rights law in armed conflict. One of it concerns the use of lethal force against lawful targets. It is important to examine such issue in this introductory chapter, even if this will lead us to go into the substance, as it will enable ones to grasp some fundamental issues addressed in the next chapters. As you already know, and you will see it in detail later, HL allows the use of lethal force against lawful targets because of their status, in particular as combatants or as civilians directly taking part into the hostilities. This has classically been interpreted as allowing the killing of such targets without requiring that capture and arrest of the person must first be attempted. What is therefore crucial in that respect is the category to which the person belongs. Under human rights law, the use of lethal force is only allowed in case of absolute necessity, which legally requires attempting to arrest and capture the person. We have, therefore, two different paradigms. The traditional IHL paradigm and the human rights law paradigm, which is more restrictive. The human rights law paradigm is also called the law enforcement paradigm. So which of the two paradigms, IHL or human rights law, must be applied? There are four main positions on that subject. The classical view, supported by many states and based on the Lex Specialis principle, is that only the IHL paradigm applies. In other words, it is always IHL which will regulate the targeting in any situation related to an armed conflict, allowing to use lethal force against lawful targets because of their status. However, this traditional position is contested. The first alternative view is that only the human rights law paradigm applies in certain situations, namely in regions outside of the battlefield, where the targeting by a state takes place in such regions which are under the control of that state. This view criticizes the opinion that the Lex Specialis principle would necessarily displace the application of human rights law. Indeed, it is not always easy to distinguish the specific norm from the general one. What does specific really mean? We could, for example, argue that human rights law, rather than IHL, is the specific law applicable to the conduct of armed forces of a state on its territory, of course, when that state controls it, especially in case of non-international armed conflict. We know that IHL only provides for a general protection in non-international armed conflicts, and that the human rights protection is more detailed. It is therefore argued that in case of effective control exercised by a state over the area where the target is located, this is the human rights paradigm which must always, always apply, instead of IHL. Another alternative view, which leads to a similar result in terms of targeting, is to consider that when applicable, both IHL and human rights law concurrently regulate the targeting in any situation related to an armed conflict. None of them would displace the application of the other. The application may either lead to the same result, in particular when the targeting takes place in the battlefield, or it may lead to different results, especially when targeting takes place outside the battlefield in regions effectively controlled by the targeting state. In that case, both IHL and human rights law would have to be respected, with the application of human rights law being stricter than the application of IHL. There is a last alternative view, which also leads to a similar result, 
but it applies not only to states, but also to armed groups. This view is indeed based not on the, on the application of human rights law, but which, which binds only states, but on a particular interpretation of IGEL, which binds both states and armed groups. It is to consider that only IHL applies, but not the traditional IHL paradigm. That paradigm is indeed called into question. It is argued that IHL does not give an unlimited right to use lethal force against lawful targets. The notion of military necessity, which is proper to IHL, would limit that right in that sense. If the, capture, if the capture of the person is possible and the use of lethal force not necessary, according to military necessity, it is required under IHL not to use lethal force. This is a more restrictive IHL paradigm. This may particularly be the case when a legitimate target is located in a region firmly controlled by the enemy. That position has been supported by the International Committee of the Red Cross in its famous document called Interpretive Guidance on the Notion of Direct Participation in Hostilities. This has been contested by states and led several of them not to approve the document. However, many of them recognize that they adopt such approach as a matter of policy. <laughs> 